I'd like to acknowledge a really special mathematical gem um, by George Odom. And he put together in 1983, he did this diagram of an equilateral triangle. And he showed us that in when the triangle is circumscribed by a circle touching its three points, there is a golden ratio in there. And this is quite a profound discovery. This And the reason why I'd like to talk about this now is that uh, many uh, mathematicians for the last uh, three, four decades, they've all used this diagram. And my concern is that not one mathematician or geometer that I know have acknowledged George Odom. And so I'd like to uh, give a tribute to the power of acknowledgement because we stand on the shoulders of other great mathematicians. And when we use their diagrams, it's really critical that we show we've researched this and we're sharing it. So I want to show you how he got this diagram. So I'm calling this phi in the equilateral triangle. So equilateral means that um, with the three sides are equal. I might do this in yellow. So, so there's one, two, and three. And just so you know, if the dimensions of this triangle, I could have done it one by one by one, but in this case here, the distance is phi. So that distance going across there is 1.618. So if that's 1.618, that's 1.618. So that's also phi, and this is also phi. So the length of each side in this situation is 2 phi, 2 times 1.618. So when we um, show diagrammatics like this, we might, we need to give the, the points or the vertices a name. So we'll call that E, D, and F, right? So what we want to do is we want to highlight the three midpoints. So the critical thing about this is that um, Odom decided to say, I'm going to take the midpoint of the three sides like that. And by doing that, we have to also um, give them a name as well. So we'll call that A, B, I, I'll mark them here. That's B, A, B, and C. So I'm gonna draw that in blue here. And um, so, when we draw a circle around a shape, it's called circumscribed. It means we're going around the polygon. So this is called a circumscribed equilateral triangle. And I'm wondering if you can actually see where the golden ratio is. So when we talk about the golden ratio, the ratio must be one is to phi. So when we talk about phi, it must be one is to 1.618. And that's not actually a number. This goes to infinity, 1.618033988. It's really a relationship between, a cascading relationship between two Fibonacci numbers. So, so it approximates to 34 divided by 21. So this is not a number. Phi is actually a proportion between two successive Fibonacci series. And it goes to a limit and it approaches 1.618. So it just happens that when we extend, when we extend, when we go from this midpoint to that midpoint and go to the circumscribed circle, we'll give that a name, G. We've got to give that a name now because that's a critical point. We've suddenly discovered that if this is 1.618, this distance from the lateral, from the side to the circumference is one. So the, there's the distance one and there's the distance phi. So that means it works all the way through. So we've just, that means if I went from here to there, we could extend this out to there. And if we did the same again with this side, we could extend this all the way and we can do the same through here. So I'm just going through all the midpoints. And what it does, it opens up a whole new domain, a whole landscape of inquiry and um, mathematical proportions. Um, so this is what we call a mathematical plum. It is, um, it is sacred because the first shape that can form in the plane is a triangle. So that means if the triangle is in the phi ratio, it also means that the Star of David. So when we draw a circle and we have 
one triangle interpenetrated by another one, that means that the sacred symbols like, say, the Star of David must also be in the golden ratio. And, and subsequently, I've gone to prove that everything I know has the golden ratio in it. So by understanding that the triangle and the hexagon, because when we join the six sides, one, two, three, four, five, six, we understand that the hexagon, when it connects with the pentagon, is part of the key to the DNA. So that's called pentahexa. So it's important to know, and that's, that implies that DNA is full of the golden ratio, and that's why it's part of the human body. So when we bend our arm, if this is one from shoulder to elbow, the distance from here to there is 1.618. So we're a mirror of nature. We're a, the macrocosm and the microcosm. And just before I complete, um, actually what I'd like to do is to complete the golden ratio here, um, we can conclude and say that the distance of AG, so from this midpoint to the circumference, AG divided by AB, this distance here, equals phi. So that's the conclusion. That distance divided by this distance is 1.618, and it extends or permeates all the way through. Um, just a curiosity to conclude, I'd like to, most people assume if I, I work a lot with children and adults, and I often ask people where the center of a triangle is. So look at the triangle EDF. And most people, when they say, where is the center of the triangle? They, they usually put a point around here. I'll exaggerate it. To most people, that's actually um, the center of the circle, right? The, the center of the circle, when I drew this circle here, it was actually this point here. But that's not, that, that is the center of the triangle. But, um, but the distance is not the middle of the vertical. So this vertical point that goes right through, it's not the midpoint. The midpoint is here, right? But the center is called a third of the vertical height. So if, if we divided, if we took that distance again from there to there, there's two, two parts of three and one part of three here. So most people think that the center of the triangle is, is at this point here, but it's actually there. So I've written that down here. The center of the triangle equals a third of the vertical height. So that means if, if this distance here, OC, is a third, we call it 0.33, that's a third. So that means the distance from here to there must be 0.666. So just to show you that embedded within the triangle is a whole new set of harmonics that resonate to the Trinity and 666 and many other things. There's um, a lot to discover in this because this is our, the triangle is the starting point. From the three, we, we go to the four, to the five, to the six. I always love teaching um, the mathematics of the triangle. It's the, it's the place to start. I hope you enjoyed this.